Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 32 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of a CTO with an ambiguous proximal cap, as well as a segment that coursed within an occluded previously placed stent. Diagnostic angiography demonstrates the occlusion of the proximal right coronary artery with multiple branches originating at the proximal cap, making it very hard to determine the origin of the vessel. It's a long area of occlusion. There's some reconstitution of the mid-RCA from bridging collaterals. And in the distal part of the vessel, there was a previously placed stent. The PDA was filling via collaterals from the LAD that can be seen a little better in the RAO cranial view, showing the septal collaterals supplying the diffusely diseased posterior descending artery immediately distal to the previously placed occluded stent. Given the long length of occlusion, the ambiguous proximal cap, and uh, the presence of good collaterals, the first attempt was for a primary retrograde approach. However, despite several attempts to wire through the septal collateral, we were unable to do so. And as a result, we switched back to an undegraded approach. We did multiple and geographic projections in an attempt to clarify the ambiguity of the proximal cap. However, we were unable to do so, despite using projections like the lateral projection, which can sometimes be very useful. We see here an acute marginal branch, we see a natural branch, multiple bridging collaterals, but it is truly unclear as to where is the proximal vessel. You used various guides due to challenges with um, guide catheter support. This is an AL.75. And then, given the inability to clarify the ambiguity by using various projections, we use a technique called the scratch and go technique, in which we intentionally cause a dissection in the vessel proximal to the occlusion so that we can get access to the subintimal space and then cross the CTO in the subintimal direction. After causing the dissection in the proximal RCA, we actually had to change the guide catheter because of support issues with an AL1. This is a JR4 guide catheter with a side branch anchoring balloon keeping the guide catheter in place. After causing the dissection, we were then able to advance a knuckled filter XT guide wire into the dissection plane and in now tracking down the course of the right coronary artery, which was excellent because allow us to cross very rapidly through that ambiguous proximal cap area. However, we then reached the distal RCA proximal to the previously placed occluded stem. It was very hard to wire past the occluded stem. We tried to advance a wire through, but that was not feasible. And eventually we elected to go around the previously placed stand, given that we were already in the subintimal plane. We use a pilot 200 guide wire, and with significant difficulty and forceful pushing, we were able to advance the knuckle around the previously placed stand. You can see now the cross boss is advanced halfway through the previously occluded stand, the knuckle is still moving forward, and then slowly but slowly we're able to make progress moving around the previously placed stem. And finally, we were able to advance the knuckle past the stem. However, it's now going in a small side branch. We were able to use the Gaia composite core guide wires to redirect into the direction of the posterior descending artery. And then by doing that, we're finally able to advance the wire subintimally into the right posterior descending artery, which is moving very nicely in sync with the posterior descending artery. We had a lot of difficulty, however, advancing equipment past that area, requiring multiple maneuvers. Finally, a threader microcatheter was able to be advanced around and dilate that area. And this is an example of a balloon and crossable CTO. Now we have subintimal crossing, but we cannot advance equipment through it. And there is a systematic approach to this that starts by using small balloons and a threaded microcatheter, and then escalates to more aggressive maneuvers like various microcatheters, various support strategies. In our case, we already had a side branch anchor balloon there, using laser and using subintimal techniques. We're finally able to advance and then deliver a stingray balloon into the distal part uh, of the occlusion, right next to the posterior descending artery, and then we perform what's called the double blind stick and swap technique. Here's the stingray balloon, and we advance the stingray wire 
on both directions. This is proximal to the proximal marker. And then the wire is withdrawn and then it's advanced uh, in between the two markers going in the inferior course. And after doing that, which changed for a pilot 200 guide wire that was advanced um, uh, through one of those areas. And these are different techniques of facilitating re-entry. One of them is the straw technique in which we apply suction to minimize any hematoma that's compressing the distal true lumen. And the other one is the double blind stick and shop technique in which of, instead of trying to do contrast injections to determine where the vessel is, we stick through both sides of the inflated stingray balloon and then advance a polymer jacketed guide wire, usually pilot 200, to select the course and the, and the exit point that connects with the vessel. And by doing this, we have now the wire into the PDA. It seems to be in good position. We confirm in an orthogonal view, and indeed, we have distal true lumen access wiring proximal to the proximal marker of the Stingray balloon catheter. We were able to advance and then do some predilatation with a small balloon. And now we see the crossing into the distal vessel subintimally, and we also see that we've crossed around the previously placed stent. This is a fascinating finding showing that we are still in the vessel architecture, but essentially the subintimal space around the previously placed stent. We were finally able to place the several stents and recanalize the lesion, and final intravascular ultrasound demonstrated a nice stent expansion in stem strata position with essentially a compression of the previously placed stent. Here is the previously placed crust stent into the subintimal space. So this case shows several interesting points about CTO-PCI. The first is that hybrid approach is very important. In this particular case, we first started a retrograde approach. However, after this failed, we switched undergrade, undergrade dissection reentry, and we were able to uh, recanalize the lesion. The second is about proximal cap ambiguity. If we're unable to clarify it despite doing multiple projections, then the scratch and go technique, namely causing a dissection proximal to the proximal cap and then using some intimal crossing can be useful. The third interesting point is that in cases where we cannot cross through a previously placed occluded stand, Sometimes we can go around the stand and crush it with another stand, and that's essentially a subintimal crossing around a previously placed stand and crushing. We use the Gaia wire to redirect us from a small branch into the right posterior descending artery. Those composite core wires have very good one-to-one -one transmission of torque, allowing precise and accurate maneuvers. Then we had the balloon uncrossable CTO requiring use of the threader microcatheter to get through. And finally, using the double blind stick and swap technique to re-enter into the PDA after subintimal crossing. Thank you.